Have you ever wondered what happened to the bodies of those who perished on the Titanic? Let's journey back in time to the early hours of April 15, 1912. The unsinkable Titanic, a marvel of human engineering, meets its tragic end in the icy waters of the North Atlantic. The ship, on its maiden voyage from Southampton to New York, was carrying over 2,200 passengers and crew. Among them were some of the wealthiest people in the world, as well as hundreds of immigrants hoping for a fresh start in America. But beneath the starlit sky, disaster struck. The Titanic hit an iceberg and began to sink. In less than three hours, the Titanic was lost, plunging over two miles to the ocean floor. More than 1,500 people perished in the disaster, a loss of life exacerbated by the insufficient number of lifeboats on board. The news of the Titanic's sinking sent shockwaves around the globe. The world mourned, and soon, recovery efforts began. Ships like the Mackay Bennett were dispatched from nearby Halifax, Nova Scotia, to recover the bodies. The grim task was arduous and heartbreaking. Many bodies were found floating in life jackets, frozen in the icy Atlantic waters. Yet, despite the efforts, many of those who perished were never recovered. The vastness of the ocean, the currents, and the sea life made recovery a daunting, if not impossible, task. The sea, in its infinite mystery, claimed them, leaving families and friends to mourn without a tangible symbol of their loss. As the Titanic sunk, it took with it over 1,500 lives, leaving us to wonder what became of them beneath the icy waves. The story of the Titanic is not just a tale of a ship sinking, but a stark reminder of the fragility of life and the relentless power of nature. And as we delve deeper into this tragic tale, we will explore the fate of these souls lost in the unforgiving depths of the ocean. In the days following the disaster, the sea was a grim sight. The cold, unforgiving North Atlantic was strewn with remnants of the once majestic Titanic, and tragically, the bodies of its passengers. The recovery efforts began almost immediately, led by an armada of ships determined to bring some semblance of closure to the grieving families ashore. One of the first ships on the scene was the cable ship Mackay Bennett, dispatched from Halifax, Nova Scotia. The crew faced an enormous task, not only due to the sheer number of victims, but also the harsh conditions of the open sea. Imagine, if you will, working tirelessly in the biting cold, surrounded by a sea littered with debris and the dead. It was a scene of incomprehensible heartbreak. The McCabe Bennett alone recovered over 300 bodies, and yet this was just a fraction of the over 1,500 lives lost. The process of identifying and preserving the bodies was a meticulous one. Each body was numbered. Personal effects were carefully logged and, whenever possible, photographs were taken to aid in identification. Bodies were preserved with ice, a precious commodity on board, and the ship's carpenter worked ceaselessly, crafting makeshift coffins. Despite these efforts, the task was overwhelming. The sheer number of bodies, the lack of resources, and the deteriorating condition of the victims made it impossible to recover everyone. Many bodies were buried at sea, a heartbreaking decision made out of sheer necessity. The remaining bodies were transported back to Halifax, where the grim task of identification continued. The ships involved in the recovery faced an unenviable task. They worked tirelessly, motivated by a sense of duty and humanity, attempting to bring some peace to those left grieving on dry land. Yet, the ocean is a vast, unforgiving entity, and many of the Titanic's victims would forever remain a part of its depths. Despite the valiant efforts, most of the bodies remained lost to the sea. The recovery effort was a poignant chapter in the Titanic story, a stark reminder of the human cost of this historic disaster. The ocean, though a grave, is not a preserver. It's a statement that holds a weighty truth when we consider the fate of those who perished with the Titanic. The ocean's role in this narrative is as profound as it is merciless. Let's consider the water itself. The Titanic sank in the North Atlantic, where temperatures can plummet to 2 degrees Celsius or 36 degrees Fahrenheit. At such frigid temperatures, life slows down and decomposition is no exception. But it doesn't stop entirely. Then we have the pressure. The Titanic rests nearly two and a half miles beneath the surface. Here, 
The pressure is over 370 times greater than at sea level. This immense pressure can crush and compact organic matter, including human bodies hastening the process of decomposition. Now, let's not forget the ocean's inhabitants. The sea is teeming with life, microscopic and otherwise. These organisms play a vital role in the ocean's food chain and sadly, the bodies of the titanic victims became part of this cycle. Scavengers such as hagfish and rat-tailfish would have been among the first to arrive at the wreckage, feeding on the soft tissues. Then bacteria and other microorganisms would take over, breaking down the tougher materials, including bones. These factors combined, the water's chill, the crushing pressure, the relentless work of sea creatures, meant that the human bodies sank with the Titanic were subject to swift and unyielding decomposition. The ocean's process of reclaiming is thorough, leaving little trace behind. This is not to say that the ocean is cruel or indifferent. It simply follows the laws of nature, the cycle of life and death, of decay and rebirth. The bodies of the Titanic victims were absorbed into this cycle, becoming part of the vast, ever-changing tapestry of oceanic life. The ocean's depths, a world away from human touch, claimed the bodies as its own. Scene script. Years passed, and the Titanic became a legend, its resting place unknown. The tale of the Titanic, however, was far from over. It wasn't until 73 years after the ship's tragic end that her wreckage was discovered. In September of 1985, a joint American-French expedition, led by oceanographer Robert Ballard, finally located the remains of the Titanic. The ship was found approximately two and a half miles beneath the surface of the North Atlantic Ocean, over 300 miles off the coast of Newfoundland. The discovery of the wreck was a monumental achievement. It brought closure to one of the most enduring maritime mysteries of the 20th century. For the first time, researchers were able to explore the site and shed light on the fate of the Titanic and its victims. Using advanced technology, the explorers were able to survey and document the sprawling debris field. They found the ship broken in two with the bow and stern lying about a third of a mile apart. The wreck and surrounding area were littered with artifacts from the ship, personal belongings of the passengers and fragments of the ship itself. The exploration of the site did more than just confirm the Titanic's final resting place. It also raised new questions. The absence of human remains led many to wonder, what happened to the bodies of the over 1,500 people who perished in the disaster? This question sparked new theories and led to further research, adding another chapter to the Titanic story. Despite the significant findings, the exploration also served as a poignant reminder of the tragedy. The grandeur of the Titanic, once a symbol of human achievement and luxury, was reduced to a haunting image of twisted metal and scattered debris on the ocean floor. The discovery highlighted the devastating human cost of the disaster and underscored the Titanic's enduring legacy as a symbol of human hubris and the power of nature. The Titanic's wreck, a silent testament to the tragedy, held no trace of its many victims. The Titanic, now a part of history, still captures our imagination. An emblem of human ambition and a testament to our fallibility, the fate of the Titanic continues to resonate over a century after its tragic end. It's the stories of its victims, the human lives abruptly snuffed out in the frigid Atlantic that hit us hardest. Their tales of love, loss and bravery echo through time, a poignant reminder of our shared humanity. Over the years, these stories have been told and retold immortalized in books, films, and songs. We remember the band that played on as the ship sank, the wealthy who gave up their lifeboats for the less fortunate, and the countless others whose names we may never know. Each one a testament to the human spirit, a narration of courage in the face of catastrophe. The Titanic disaster also served as a harsh wake-up call, sparking significant improvements in maritime safety. The establishment of the International Ice Patrol, stricter lifeboat requirements, and the adoption of the SOS distress signal are but a few examples of the lessons learned from that fateful night. Yet our fascination with the Titanic extends beyond its historical impact. 
The wreck site, resting two and a half miles beneath the surface, continues to draw scientists and explorers eager to unlock its secrets. Every expedition uncovers new artifacts, each one a piece of the puzzle revealing more about the lives lost and the world they left behind. Despite the passing of time, the allure of the Titanic remains undiminished. Its tragic tale continues to grip our hearts, its lessons still relevant, its victims never forgotten. Every retelling, every discovery, every remembrance keeps the legacy of the Titanic alive. Though the sea claimed them, the memory of the Titanic's victims lives on, a reminder of the human cost of hubris and disaster.